Hey YouTube, seems I found a little bit of English eccentricity, but it appears to be under a flight path, so you'll have to forgive the noise. I just wanted to add a little to Evie Brooklyn's video on Jehovah's Witness preschool propaganda, and I think she was adding to LA Gamer's video on the same subject. We've all felt that indoctrination of children is harmful, but now Cognitive Science magazine has published a study that provides overwhelming evidence that religious inculcation of the young is in fact as harmful as we feared. Research found that childhood exposure to biblical miracle stories left kids unable to distinguish between reality and fantasy. These children struggled to grasp basic precepts of logic and could be described as less rational than children not exposed to early indoctrination. The effect of the brainwashing was to render the growing adult more likely to be gullible, more influenceable and less likely to request evidence when making, de making decisions. The growing adult really is handicapped for life in the real world. In an earlier video I responded to an active Jehovah's Witness that stated that the Witness upbringing was a protection in life. My response was my cult childhood was indeed protective, but in the same way as removing a child's legs, locking him indoors and refusing any contact with the outside world in order to save that child from sunburn, when some sort of hat and a little lotion would do just as well. My early childhood was similar to Evie's in that the cult made no significant effort to provide me with age-appropriate brainwashing material. And maybe this has contributed to the cult's low retention of bornings. This recent move to professionalise the crippling of children's minds with slick obedience cartoons, etc., indicates to me this cult is moving to address this leakage to help them survive into the future. If you remember the Spanish multi-faith conference I referenced in another video a few years back, where all major religions were brainstorming on combating their obvious decline in committed members, I said at the time, look out for a change in tactics. And this is it. Fundamentalists are trying harder than ever to get their faiths taught in school, and technology is being used to make visually impressive material to trick innocent children and their mind-controlled parents. People like Ken Ham are asking children to disrupt classrooms with the asinine were you there when faced with evidence that contradicts the beliefs of their indoctrinated parents. And Jehovah's Witnesses do the same thing, but in a quieter, more subtle, under-the-radar kind of way. And all this is happening after faith was judged unfit to teach on both sides of the pond. I find it interesting that religion in general and our favourite cult conforms to the seven-stage model of business life and from my observations is in the decline stage. At this stage, a business concentrates on reducing costs and better exploiting their captive victims. Victims include suppliers, workers and customers hence the de facto tithing. The enhanced exploitation of children to balance the ageing liquid money and even more heaped duties on the sagging shoulders of the elders. At this stage it is common for business to start unfair practices in order to provide funds for a planned exit or to fund new ventures. Think of your mobile phone. Now that everyone that wants one has one, the providers struggle for growth in a saturated market. Their first action is to extract more cash from existing customers and then to churn. Churning is when businesses tempt existing phone users away from other firms. There are no new users to be had, so they must steal customers or steal sheep from each other. The purpose of field service but when that generates insufficient returns, the most damaging part starts, which is the cartel. 
many mobile phone providers at this stage agree not to seriously compete with each other and make it harder to leave and design ways to squeeze their remaining customers. It's meant to stave off the inevitable death of an industry and it only works for as long as no one invents anything new. That meeting of Jew, Christian, Muslim and Mormon and other Christian leadership in Spain indicates for me the beginning of the cartel cent of, of a cartel centred around squeezing their adherence. And although I'm not a betting man, I'd wager the witnesses were represented or at least had an interest at that conference too. And why not after United Nations membership? As always, it's the children that pay for the stupidity of their elders and those that, protect, that fail to protect them from proven mind-killing foolishness. But before I go, I was reading Numbers chapter 5 to find that if a woman is pregnant and her husband suspects she's been unfaithful, Jehovah has that woman drink a bitter potion that causes miscarriage if the child is indeed sour bread. Isn't that selective abortion? And according to Genesis chapter 38, a woman in that situation should be burned to death. Is it any wonder this nonsense messes up kids? But if you're looking for a biblical giggle, check out Ezekiel chapter 23. It's hardcore pornography. The same words in a film or in any other book would get you disfellowshipped or reproved at the very least. And here's a little bit from verse 19. Yet she became more and more promiscuous as she recalled the days of her youth when she was a prostitute in Egypt. There she lusted after her lovers whose genitals were like those of donkeys and whose emission was like that of horses. So you longed for the lewdness of your youth when in Egypt your bosom was caressed and your young breasts fondled. Has our almighty God really got nothing better to say than to his creation? Or is that little, in all senses, petty, jealous men making stuff up and complaining about their females? The more I read, the more difficult it is for me to take seriously.